Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome here to the launch pad, or maybe good afternoon or evening, depending where you're joining us from. You are looking at live flight telemetry through Flight Radar 24 as we are tracking Virgin Galactic as they prepare to launch their third commercial crew. A mission kind of surrounded by secrecy. We do not know who's on board. We do not know who this mission is for. All we know is from a statement from Virgin Galactic that today's mission will have the three Galactic 3 crew members are the first of Virgin Galactic's group of founder astronauts. The first customers who forward thinking vision and early ticket purchases help make the dream of regular commercial space flights a reality. The Galactic 3 crew bought their tickets as early as 2005 and have since then been part of the future astronauts community with over 800 individuals. Now, we'd like to make a note of that. We've already seen a founder astronaut fly on Virgin Galactic 2 mission, uh, who was the former Olympian. But uh, we have confirmation that White Knight 2 is in the air, carrying VMS Unity. Uh, currently, they are passing through... Uh, let's see here, 15, uh, just coming up to 16,000 feet, increasing about 3,000 uh, feet per minute. If you're just joining us, though, welcome here to the Launchpad. My name's Zach. I'm the founder and host here at the Launchpad and here at TLP. It's our mission to inform and inspire the explorers of tomorrow because we believe that space is better together. And we're glad to have you joining us here. We're going to monitor to the best of our ability Virgin Galactic. No live cameras at the site. No live broadcast for today no crew information uh, and no timeline but uh, at this point uh, we are able to follow along with their uh, flight telemetry uh, from their transponders we have the transponder for both vms unity and for white knight 2 the mothership uh, you'll see vgx04 coming in and out of the frame there on the 3d view uh, that's just the slight differentiation of the two transponders uh, through the uh, visualization software here, but they are now passing through 18,000 feet in altitude, uh, currently going vertical speed about 2,400 feet per minute. If it's your first time here, though, welcome here at the launch pad. It's our mission to inform and inspire the explorers of tomorrow because we believe that space is better together. And if you haven't yet, take a moment and engage that subscribe button so you would never miss another live launch coverage here as part of the Launchpad Network. We're going to be answering your guys' comments and questions throughout today's stream, and we'll be answering those live through the broadcast. Just make sure you're doing that tag there. And if you haven't yet, take a moment, engage that like button, share out the broadcast, invite people to join us as we count down towards launch. We're going to keep a close eye on that telemetry on the left side of your screen and we'll actually bring it uh, full screen here for a moment. Uh, you can see those loops that they do uh, for the mothership and the spacecraft. They'll start to do in what they end up calling a racetrack formation uh, and that is where they'll be able to uh, confirm that everything is go, that the range is go and the vehicle is ready for a flight. On board though we have three passengers. The astronaut instructor as well as of course the pilot and commander for today's mission we'll loop back into that 3d view it gives us a little bit better idea what the teams are experiencing now passing through 21,400 feet uh, in altitude take a moment let us know in the chat where you're watching from I'd love to give some shout outs there I know we got lots of regulars in the chat so we're glad to have you all joining us here also wanted to give a thank you to uh best wind tv for becoming a suborbital explorer thank you so much for your support we're glad to have so many here for this uh the gehimo so is virgin galactic isn't doing a stream for this launch today nope they are not doing anything other than some live xing uh they've been providing a few updates through the morning saying they're on schedule uh, they were supposed to take off at 8.30 uh, mountain time. Uh, it's now currently 8.41, so we did have a few minute delay for takeoff, uh, but uh, they are now in the air, uh, ready for today's flight. We got Will tuning in from Germany. Tony's in Warwick, UK. Stuart is over in England, in Ply Plymouth. Plymouth? I was going to say that wrong, I know. Our UK team's going to uh, annoy me on that one. Henrik is in Denmark. Great to have you here. We got Noah in uh, Dayton, Ohio. Thanks for being here. You can see the White Knight 2, uh, Virgin Galactic's specialized carrying vehicle that's currently carrying VMS Unity. The, the flight radar system 
puts in like a 737 3D image. So that's not what it looks like, but uh, that is what uh, they use. But it gives us a little bit of an idea of what uh, th that team is uh, seeing and experiencing as they fly uh, just to the west of the White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico. We got retired engineers in Nova Scotia, Canada. Great to have you here. We got Williams in Pennsylvania. Emil is in Amsterdam. Great having you. We also got Noel in Malawi. We've got Lyndon in Austin, Texas. So at this point from previous missions, from the few that we've watched, we're generally between 20-ish, 30 minutes from launch. Uh, from when they take off if everything goes uh, perfectly well. you got to keep monitoring that racetrack. One of the big signs that things are going well is you'll want to see the chase plane take off. Uh, so we'll want to keep a close eye on that on the flight radar on the left side of your screen on that telemetry. That's where we'll have a really good idea that uh, they are progressing towards uh, a flight uh, opportunity, um, looking towards that... Uh, that possibility is that uh, chase plane going up. We're going to keep a close eye on that as they continue to do uh, some uh, kind of figure eight uh, building that racetrack loop. Uh, if they do a loop and they're not ready, they'll go for another loop, confirming they are currently passing through 27,000 feet in altitude. Currently increasing their altitude about 1,500 feet per minute. If you're just joining us, though, welcome here. We are counting down to the launch of VMS Unity on Galactic, Virgin Galactic's Galactic 3 mission. Uh, we know who the astronaut instructor is on board, and we know who the pilot and commander are uh, of both uh, White Knight 2 and VMS Unity, but we do not know who the passengers are. Uh, we did get a little bit of a hint on who they are via uh, Virgin Galactic's X account. Uh, we know one of person has a sleeve that has an American flag and a Nevada flag on it. Another person's sleeve has a UK flag and a South Africa flag. Uh, and another person has a UK flag and a uh, like a racing club flag, uh, as well as a patch for uh, a fighting dementia organization. Um, so that's really all we know. We know what their hands look like, what one of their necks look like. Uh, but other than that, this is a, a really unique mission uh, from what we've seen previously of such an early commercial flight where we don't know who's on board. We're... Now, roughly about 15 minutes from when we think they took off. Telemetry was a little delayed, um, but uh, we're in that 10 to 15 minutes roughly since uh, White Knight took off from the uh, Spaceport America uh, facility where they uh, prepare for today's mission. Now coming up to 30,000 uh, feet in altitude, continuing to increase that at about 1,500 feet per minute. And we've got an update that they had a confirmed takeoff time of 8.34 uh, a.m. Mountain Time. So the local time there. So we're uh, now just coming up to 12 minutes since takeoff. So we're pretty much right when we went live there. <laughs> Jessica's actually just playing Flight Simulator. I wish Flight Simulator was this detailed and worked on my computer. That'd be great. Um, but uh, nope, this is uh, a live simulated view of what's happening very similar to what we see with rockets uh, where uh, a f fair number of times these launch providers uh, have to do simulations because they don't have live cameras but it's all based on real-time data now passing through 31,000 feet in altitude If you guys have questions, you can send those in the chat by tagging us at the launch pad. We'll work on answering those live through, for the best of our ability. If you haven't yet, take a moment, engage that like button, share out the stream, let us know uh, where you're watching from as well. Continue to bring you the updates as we get them from Virgin Galactic, but they're uh, 
few and far between. They confirmed the takeoff time uh, with a video of takeoff on X, but that is all that we uh, have seen at this point. It does show there's a lot of people out uh, at Spaceport America uh, on the, the video that's on their X account, uh, but no media uh, invited, no live broadcasts, um, so very interesting to see. Also, just in other space news, while we've been waiting for this, the FAA released a statement announcing that they have completed their investigation into Starship's IFT-1 flight. They have issued 63 corrective actions that SpaceX will need to conduct before they can apply for a new launch license uh, and have a launch attempt for IFT-2. We'll drop the link in the chat if you want to learn a little bit more about what the FAA released earlier this morning, just within the last hours. Of course, we are monitoring that and counting down towards IFT-2. Coming back to Virgin Galactic's Galactic 3 mission, White Knight 2 now at 33,000 feet in altitude. Still in continuing to increase, about 1,600 feet a minute. You can see it's kind of oh, coming up to completing that first race track uh, for it. Now what we're going to want to really watch for, whether they do it on this loop or the next, is a divergence of the two vehicles. So we're mainly tracking the main mothership, but there is also... Uh, the secondary ship underneath, which is VMS Unity, uh, as they now pass through 34,000 uh, feet in altitude. VMS Unity will continue straight forward, where the mothership will veer off to either the left or the right uh, when they have that separation. So that's what we're going to monitor and follow along with as we continue through uh, today's flight, but uh, things seemingly to be progressing well towards a launch attempt and the release of the uh, passengers. Or a flight of the third passenger, excuse me, for uh, Virgin Galactic. If it's your first time here, though, welcome. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss another live launch coverage of any of the space agencies around the world. We're monitoring the flight radar. Uh, of VMS Unity and White Knight 2 out in New Mexico, just west of the White Sands Missile Range. Eureka, can you tell us more about the payload and why Virgin Galactic is so quiet about this flight? Really great question that I really wish I could tell you an answer for, uh, but it is not something that we uh, have. Uh, it's not something that they've released. All they've said is, the passengers on board today's flight are three people that bought tickets as early as 2005 and are early supporters. They're founder astronauts, uh, but that is all we know uh, about what is on, who is on board today as the passengers uh, for it. We know Virgin Galactic does have their team, uh, but uh, that is really all that we have at this time for that information. Now, to give you an idea of what we're watching for is once we see that divergence of the two vehicles, VMS Unity will, will be able to track for a little bit of time. It will then drop off flight radar as obviously it will be going up into space and that's not covered in flight uh, radar tracking. Uh, so we will have a drop off and then once it comes back down, we will have confirmation. It will get its signal back and we will follow that so that when it's in space, we'll continue to monitor uh, the mothership as well, uh, and then we'll watch as we await for both of them to return back to the landing site uh, when that happens. But now 17 minutes uh, since they took off from Spaceport America in New Mexico, now passing through 37,000 feet in altitude, slowing down a little bit, only going up about 1,000 feet a minute at this time. They are approaching that uh, flight elevation. Waffle Wise is just a regular uh, jet. Uh, Flight Radar hasn't spent the money to put White Knight 2 uh, on it. Um, just not something that they've done at this point. Uh, but maybe if uh, Virgin Galactic gets to the point of flying, you know, once a week or something, maybe that's something that uh, we'd be able to see.
you guys have questions, you can make sure you keep sending those in the chat, taking us at the launch pad. You can see they've come coming in and completing that first race track uh, of uh, today's flight. If things are going well, I would expect when they come back over um, the launch site that that is when we would expect to see uh, separation and the flight uh, to occur if everything is continuing nominally. So we're going to keep a close eye on that as they do try to do the flight right over Spaceport America because they have basically a cone that they have to launch in. Because once they launch VMS Unity, it launches its rocket engine and should there be um, any sort of issue with that, they have to have flown in this cone that they will be able to glide back and land on the runway as they do not have a powered engine after, after that rocket engine cuts out. That was one of the situations that occurred during one of their test flights and when we saw a very large gap between flights is that they actually should have aborted flight because they were right on the edge of that cone and actually exiting the cone that if something had gone wrong there was a risk to uh, they wouldn't have been able to make it back to the runway Continuing to monitor there now, coming up to 39,000 feet in altitude. We do have, uh, for those following along in the developing news on uh, Starship and the completion of the FAA investigation, SpaceX now having just released a statement. Uh, continuing through how everything progressed through the flight, uh, confirming that they did have uh, a severed connection with the vehicle's primary flight computer, leading to a loss of communication to the majority of the booster's engines and ultimately loss of control of the vehicle, uh, going through a lot of what they have done so far about the FTS and everything. Uh, if you haven't yet, head over to tlpnetwork.com slash news. That's where you can find out more information on that. But we're going to watch closely now as we are now 20 minutes since takeoff. You can see they've started to change that direction uh, on their track. Uh, so we're going to keeping a close eye on when uh, we're going to see those two vehicles diverge from each other. Now 39,700 feet in altitude, slowing to 500 feet per minute vertical speed uh, in the positive. We're just going to keep a close eye to see when we see that separation occur. If we switch back over to the satellite map, you can see Spaceport America there just on the right side of the tracker. That's where everyone is watching from. So they normally do try to perform their flights right over that as they do have to be able to glide back down to Spaceport America. If you haven't yet, take a moment, gauge that like button. really does help us out. Appreciate the support. Make sure you subscribe also so you never miss another live launch coverage. Docking, undocking, or return to Earth here on the launch pad. And make sure you subscribe on our secondary channel, the launch pad news. That's where we have all of our space news updates and exclusive one-on-one -on -one interviews and factory tours, all part of the launch pad network. So far, we have not seen any chase plane uh, take off yet either. So that is another thing we are continuing to watch for to see uh, if we see that chase plane take off from Spaceport America. Now up at 41,000 feet, increasing their altitude about 500 feet per minute. You can see that first racetrack was completed. Now they are kind of diverging off into a secondary track. Give me a close eye on this as they continue to fly. Now 41,300 feet 
in altitude. If you're just joining us, welcome. We are live tracking uh, White Knight 2, Virgin Galactic's mothership carrying VMS, uh, VSS unit, excuse me, uh, as they prepare to conduct their third commercial crew mission. Uh, but we don't know who's on board. Uh, so there are three people. We know one had an American flag and a Nevada flag on his, uh, his her sleeve. We had another had a UK flag and a South Africa flag. And the third passenger had a uh, UK uh, racing club and a dementia patches uh, on their sleeve. So we don't know much more than that at this time. You can now see those vehicles turning uh, to the west. Now, they were almost lined up perfectly with the runway of Spaceport America that you can see right there on your left side of your screen. That's the runway of Spaceport America where they will uh, be returning to land, both of the vehicles. Now passing through 42,350 feet, uh, 42,300 feet. It does show that they have leveled off. There's no vertical speed increase at this time. We'll see if that uh, updates. Okay, they are continuing to increase now, about 250 feet per minute. Currently traveling 276 knots at the today's speed. And continuing to increase that altitude now. Now increasing up to a thousand feet per minute. That major thing that we were watching for is that stage separation of the two vehicles, uh, White Knight 2 and VSS Unity. You'll see the two planes on the left side of your screen split away. Very unique track that they are doing, very different from the track that we saw them uh, perform last time. Uh, Jimmy asking, why are we watching Flight Simulator? Do they not have cameras? Uh, they have restricted all media for this. There is no live broadcast, and there seemingly seems to be no media on site either um, for it. So it's we don't know who's on board. Uh, our team was kind of talking and speculating. Is there someone so important that it was too risky to announce who was on board? You know, that it would bring a greater risk of flight? Um to the to the mission but um that's all completely just a speculation at this point but would explain it even on previous military flights we've known who was on board or they've just said it was a military mission but for this one they've said no it's three of their own uh early astronaut uh ticket holders so very interesting that it is such a secretive mission now currently at forty three thousand one hundred feet in altitude Continuing to increase about 500 feet per minute. Uh, Doug saying, why not just be off property with some cameras? That is the plan for the future. Um, but uh, with these missions, we don't get a whole lot of notice uh, to be able to have uh, crews gather all the gears and jump on flights that are reasonably cost uh, for it. So there's there's a lot of cost to be able to do that. But it is something that we are working on uh, to try to do in the future uh, and working with Virgin Galactic directly as well. So our mission at TLP is to inform and inspire the explorers of tomorrow because we believe that space is better together so it always is our mission to hopefully work with these launch providers to be able to bring you our own independent coverage of these missions uh, but bringing you the best possible coverage of them so as well uh, we are hoping that uh, we will be able to have some uh, increased coverage for Galactic 4 uh, which we do expect to happen later this year before the end of the year possibly even seeing Galactic 4 and 5 by the end of the year Virgin Galactic continuing trying to do basically a mission a month Coming up just shy of 44,000 feet. Again, they're leveling off roughly. 
They're, they're kind of fluctuating there. Now they're back up to 500 feet per minute vertical speed, 640 feet vertical speed. Now at 44, 1,000 feet in altitude. If you are a fan of space and interested in joining the TLP crew, maybe you live in the New Mexico area uh, or anywhere around the world. We are looking at expanding our TLP crew. You can head over to tlpnetwork.com, fill in an application there. We are uh, looking for a couple more moderators to join our team as well as some people to join our uh, volunteer journalist team uh, and research team as we are working on version 2 of the TLP uh, app and we're super excited to have that coming out hopefully in the near future working on some final things on it as well as expanding our website to try to make all of space information accessible in one place uh, and easy to understand so if you're interested in joining that crew uh, as i said as a moderator journalist researcher or a rocket chaser uh, head on over to the website there fill out that application and uh, maybe you too can help inform and inspire that next generation if you're just joining us though, welcome. We are looking at live flight telemetry from White Knight 2 and VSS Unity, a Virgin Galactic space plane. Now at 44,275 feet in altitude, increasing at about six to 700 feet per minute. Via White Knight 2 took off 29 minutes, 20 seconds ago from Spaceport America, carrying three unknown passengers on board. If you guys have questions, you can send those in the chat by tagging us at the launch pad. We'll work on answering those live to the best of our ability as we continue to monitor. What we're waiting for is seeing those two planes separate uh, from each other. That is going to be when we have an idea that uh, the flight has begun and that VSS Unity has been dropped from the White Knight 2 spacecraft and is beginning its journey to space. Uh, Waffle, why are they doing so many loops? Wouldn't going straight, turning around, and separating be easier, faster, and cheaper? Yes, but they want to make sure everything works. They want to, one, get out to the right altitude, so they don't want to uh, rush that. Uh, two, they want to do final checkouts of the range, the weather, the passengers, and the vehicle once they are up at that altitude. So that is why you see, very similar to Virgin Orbit, that you would do at least one loop of your flight track, kind of racetrack, prior to separation. Um, for it. And Judge saying maybe they aren't streaming because passengers told them not to. It's absolutely an option um, or a possibility that passengers had said, you know, we're, we're not interested in being uh, broadcast. That is definitely a possibility. Uh, kind of odd that you'd want to go to space and you're booking a flight like this on a very public, generally speaking, thing. Being some of the first people to fly on it and not wanting to be known. Um, it will come out eventually, I would say. Uh, probably even later today. Ricky, thank you so much for those gifted memberships. Really appreciate that. Thanks for the support there. White Knight 2 now at 44,200 feet in altitude, leveling off currently. We'll see if they continue to climb at all. Based on their current positioning, though, if you look at the positioning of the runway, it does look really good that they are now parallel to that. So I'd expect them to fly a bit further to the northwest, loop around, come around, and then they'll release, and that means the flight would happen right over top of Spaceport America. So that is a good look to their current trajectory uh, of the mothership carrying VSS Unity. If you haven't yet, take a moment, engage that like button, share out the stream, invite people to join us. We're now tw 32 minutes into today's flight, waiting for spacecraft separation.
And if you're just joining us, welcome here to the launch pad. You're looking at live simulated uh, animations from live telemetry from White Knight 2, Virgin Galactic's mothership currently carrying VSS Unity. White Knight 2 took off 39 minutes, 30 seconds ago from Spaceport America carrying the VSS Unity spacecraft with a astronaut instructor, two flight crew, as well as three commercial passengers on board. But that's all we know about these commercial passengers. We have a picture of what was on their sleeve. We know one had a U.S. flag with a Nevada flag. The other had a U.K. flag with a South Africa flag. And the other had a U.K. flag with a dementia flag and a racing group flag. That is all we know of these passengers, other than what their hands and neck look like in the little teaser video. But we are continuing to monitor White Knight 2. You can see it now beginning to do that loop back around, completing that red racetrack uh, shape, heading back towards Spaceport America here. If things are nominal, I do expect that this would be when we would see a release of the vehicle coming up here once they are headed back towards Spaceport America, as the flight does occur over the spaceport. But they need to, uh, they've only done about eh, two fifths of that loop back around so far, so we'll continue to track that. Currently, they are at 44,600 feet in altitude, uh, staying right around there, staying within about three, four hundred feet. Uh, in uh, altitude difference for the last number of minutes. Uh, the different colors on that uh, map on the left shows their altitude. So you can really see they've been up at that 40 to 44,000 feet range for a fair amount of today's flight. Uh, but we are waiting to see that spacecraft separation. You'll know that when that happens because you'll see the two vehicles on the left separate. Uh, there'll be two different tracks. The White Knight 2 will verge to either left or right to clear way as VSS Unity ignites its rocket engine and flies off to space on its mission. Once that uh, rocket engine separates, it will do its kind of backflip maneuver uh, up into near space and then it will glide back down to Spaceport America. Virgin Galactic not giving any information as we said about the passengers but also no broadcast of today. Uh, they've been giving a couple updates via X just confirming takeoff of the flight and uh, we'll hopefully have confirmation of separation as well uh, but that is all that we are getting today for today's mission. Now at 45,000 feet in altitude, you're definitely looking at them completing that loop, uh, heading back towards Spaceport America. Really good sign that this could be when we see that flight. We're going to move that map on the left there. Spaceport America, you can just make out the runway where my hand is on the left side of your screen there. That's the runway where they took off, and that's where uh, generally we see them do the flight kind of right above. If you're just joining us, though, take a moment, engage that like button, share out the stream. We are now 42 minutes, 25 seconds into today's flight. Waiting for separation. You are looking at a simulated live view from Flight Radar 24 that is auto-generated based on live flight telemetry from the spacecraft. Uh, we are getting data sources through uh, Albuquerque's ARTCC and ADS-B data sources uh, as we continue to monitor both the White Knight's plane and the VSS Unity spacecraft. White Knight 2 is a custom twin hull airplane that VSS Unity flies uh, underneath uh, of, and then they will have a release and ignition of VSS Unity's rocket engine, which will ultimately carry them up towards the edge of space. Continuing to maintain that 44,500 to just below 45,000 feet in altitude. So they continue back towards Spaceport America. You can actually see now on that 3D map view the valley uh, area where Spaceport America is. They'll continue to turn a little bit more to the right and basically are now perfectly lined up with the Spaceport America runway, uh, which will be dead ahead of that 3D model of the plane. Flight Radar doesn't have a custom White Knight plane, so they're just using a 737 model, but gives you a good idea of what the flight crew is kind of seeing in the landscape below them. Now, 44 minutes since via, uh, White Knight 2 carrying VSS Unity took off from Spaceport America. They are now lined up with the runway, 
uh, they'll be going through their final checks. But if everything is nominal, this is when we would expect in the next few minutes to see that separation of the spacecraft carrying those three commercial unknown passengers to near space. We're going to continue to watch, her, watch the altitude and we're going to watch for the divergence of those two vehicles. Virgin Galactic releasing a statement as we climb to release altitude. Our Galactic 3 crew are conducting cabin checks and are preparing for release. So uh, confirmation there that uh, we do have that they are preparing for separation. We will be keeping a close eye there. On the left side of your screen where you see VGX04, that is tracking VMS Unity. We do expect to lose track of that when it does uh, separate and begin its journey up into space, but we'll reacquire that signal as quickly as we can. We'll keep the 3D view of White Knight 2 on the main screen uh, for most of the flight as well, as we won't lose its flight. But uh, we should now be moments away from separation of the two aircraft, the vehicles both at 44,500 feet, traveling 331 knots. If you haven't yet, take a moment, share out the stream, invite people to join us as we are now moments away from today's Flight Galactic 3 for Virgin Galactic. 45 minutes, 40 seconds since White Knight 2 took off from Spaceport America. Now beginning to reapproach Spaceport America from the northwest on basically a direct flyover. We are watching flight speed as well as vehicles uh, telemetry to see if we have that separation event. We do expect to see that momentarily here. Normally we would say let's see a go no go in the chat when we know there's about two minutes but as we think we're imminently there uh, as always here at the TLP uh, network we want to see that go no go from our community in the chat for today's launch. Now 46 minutes 45 seconds since White Knight 2 took off from Spaceport America currently 44,700 feet in altitude. Continuing to stay right in that corridor there within about 400, 500 feet altitude. But we should be seeing that spacecraft separation here basically any moment. If you're just joining us, welcome here to the launch pad. We are awaiting drop of VSS Unity from White Knight 2 for Virgin Galactic's Galactic 3 mission. You're looking at live vehicle telemetry uh, from their transponders over Spaceport America. You can see them reapproaching from the northwest. Currently 44,500 feet in altitude. Traveling 326 knots. We're waiting to see that vehicle separation confirmed on the telemetry on the left side of your screen. We do have a large increase there in vertical speed. Now 1,500 meters per second increase. Now 45,000 feet in altitude. Now increasing 1,100 feet per minute. So they are gaining some altitude. Now 45,500 feet. This is exactly what we expect to see during a separation attempt. 46,250 feet. And I believe that would be separation there. We'll wait to see. That is, yeah, I would take that as separation. We do have the separation of VSS Unity from the mothership. It is now traveling 62,000 feet. We're going to monitor there. White Knight 2 diverting away. VSS Unity now it looks like possibly have dropped off of the live tracking. 
So we'll keep a close eye on that and wait for reacquisition of signal once uh, it returns from its flight. But that is a separation of the spacecraft carrying three more passengers up to near space right above Spaceport America. White Knight 2 now removing itself to a safe distance while the spacecraft continues its flight. See if we have any more updated info. We do not have any live data coming in from VSS Unity as it is now outside of flight tracking information, but it's continuing on a track of 177 degrees, uh, flying over Spaceport America. We will wait for reacquisition of its signal for an update on its location as it continues to fly towards Spaceport America. Waiting for any updates from Virgin Galactic on the flight. But at this time, nothing as of yet. But from the flight radar data, this has definitely had a separation event. Waiting for confirmation that the engine did ignite, carrying those passengers up. Separation looks like it was right at uh, 9.23, roughly, local time. White Knight 2 is currently at 47,200 feet, maintaining, taking itself out to a safe distance. And we are waiting to see when we get more information back from VSS Unity on its altitude as it will glide back down to Spaceport America. You can see White Knight off to the left, heading over that valley uh, into a safe range. It will land after VSS Unity does. As always, if you guys have questions, you can send those in the chat by tagging us at the launch pad. We know this is a little bit of a different one. No live broadcasts from Virgin Galactic, no media invited, uh, as well as we don't know who the passengers are. So a very uh, different uh, mission here. White Knight 2 now traveling at 247 degrees, 249 degrees, 47,000 feet in altitude. VSS Unity supposedly traveling about a 183 degree trajectory, but uh, we have no altitude data or speed data at this time as it is outside of the flight tracking uh, network as it continues its flight. These flights last anywhere about 10 minutes, so we should expect to see that data come back from VSS Unity uh, in the next couple of minutes, but no live cameras on board on board today being released to the public. Uh, I know if this was a customer request, um, Virgin Galactic stating that uh, today's mission had three founder astronauts on board who bought their tickets as early as 2005. They said it's their first founder's flight, uh, but we do know a founder flew on their last flight, Galactic 2, former Olympic uh, athlete. Uh, but uh, it looks like this might be their first dedicated flight of founder astronauts. White Knight 2 now looping kind of back around. It'll stay off at a safe distance until Unity is on the ground. You can see on the telemetry here where we've had that white line dropout on the uh, spacecraft. Looks like it's not even going to want to give us that line right now. So we wait for reacquisition of that signal. But there was change in color as we await for that reacquisition. Hopefully here in the next couple of minutes. If we uh, rotate the 3D view over towards where Spaceport uh, America would be off behind it, yeah, we do not see VSS Unity on the uh, other vehicles at this time. There we go. That's where it went. You can see how it was uh, going basically straight up at that separation point. And that's where we are waiting for that reacquisition of signal. And actually it does look like we have that reacquisition. Yep, we do. 58,600 feet uh, traveling now. VSS Unity making its way back to Spaceport America, having completed its flight. 54,700 feet. 
We are continuing to track, but you can see there from a side view uh, that galactic flight doing its descent. Uh, this is a view from the simulated view from White Knight looking back towards Spaceport America where VSS Unity would be. VSS Unity now 42,100 feet actually below the altitude of White Knight 2. You can see there it's beginning that hard turn as it comes back into the atmosphere uh, from its flight, continuing to descend now 38,000 feet. VSS Unity doesn't have uh, any engines on it, so it is in a glide. It is having to maintain its speed while gliding back to the Spaceport America runway, the bottom left of that telemetry screen. On the simulated view from White Knight 2, you can see the live track of its descent uh, as it continues to do kind of some loop maneuvers to maintain its speed and direction towards the runway. Now traveling 31,350 feet, VSS Unity traveling 346 knots, 325 knots, so roughly the same speed as White Knight 2. With its speed, it does generally do a flyby of Spaceport America and land coming from the other side. Uh, so we can see that now occurring. VSS Unity kind of flying to just the west of Spaceport America, 29,000 feet, traveling at 310 knots. We do have confirmation from Virgin uh, of the separation event. Uh, so we'll see if we can get that patched in here momentarily for you guys to have a view while we continue to monitor it awaiting uh, its landing. Really interesting to have a video of the release event uh, released kind of as quickly without having had any sort of uh, live coverage of the event. But uh, nice to be able to have even something to be able to show. We'll work on patching that in here momentarily. VSS Unity now 26,000 feet, traveling 295 knots. It's now quite to the southwest of Spaceport America. Working on patching in that feed from Virgin Galactic showing the confirmation of separation event. And hopefully we'll have a view of them landing as well. Now about nine minutes into today's flight. You're just joining us. Welcome here. We're continuing to track Virgin Galactic's third commercial crew mission. We're going to bring up a live feed here momentarily, bringing in. This was from Virgin Galactic, showing the separation event of VSS Unity from VMS Eve. Uh, this was about nine and a half minutes ago when this was captured. On the left side of your screen is the live telemetry view tracking VSS Unity back to Spaceport America. So you can see that separation event occurring there. Continuing to monitor the spacecraft as it comes back to Spaceport America. Spacecraft now at 18,000, 17,800 feet, uh, traveling about 250 knots. We'll uh, do a loop around of uh, White Knight 2, so you can see Spaceport America there now just below it, and there is the spacecraft now heading the opposite direction of White Knight 2, now at about 16,500 feet.
on the left side of your screen, you can see those two spacecrafts uh, and the distance they are apart flying over Spaceport America. Uh, we do have video of the crew uh, in flight now. Uh, let's bring this in here. Bear with me one moment. Uh, astronauts 14, 15, and 16 have now gone to space. This just released by Virgin Galactic of today's crew from today's flight. Now 11 minutes in, VSS Unity now 11,500 feet. Very interesting to see video of the crew so quickly when we haven't known anything else of today's mission. Um, but uh, astronauts 14, 15, and 16 uh, have now completed their flight. VSS Unity now at 10,100 feet, continuing to descend towards Spaceport America. Uh, very short looping video, uh, but showing the three of them uh, up uh, experiencing a Virgin Galactic flight, Virgin Galactic's third commercial crew mission. We know one of them has uh, an America uh, USA patch, flag patch, with a Nevada flag patch. The other has a, you can see on the right side of your screen in the middle, he has a UK flag as well as a South Africa flag. And I believe the one further to the back, yes, has the UK with a racing group flag and a dementia, I believe, patch uh, it was. Uh, so uh, great to see a little bit of footage of the crew from today's flight, even though today's mission was rather secretive. Continuing back to looking towards Spaceport America, uh, catching up where we are. There we go. This is a simulated view from White Knight 2. You can see VMS or VSS, excuse me, Unity, uh, below White Knight, now at 7,000 feet, descending towards uh, Spaceport America, preparing to land after doing another successful mission. Confirmation from Virgin Galactic that they have had a good feather lock, and Unity is now a glider heading back to the runway. No video of that, but they are uh, confirmed, as we can see from the telemetry, uh, things are continuing nominal as we await touchdown of VSS Unity back at Spaceport America. If you haven't yet, take a moment, cage that like button, share out the stream, so you never uh, invite people to watch, as well as subscribe so you never miss another live launch coverage. This is a weird one, not having any sort of live views, but we're glad to have you all here. White Knight 2 currently staying 39,800 feet, so well above, but it has begun its descent. Uh, it too will land back at Spaceport America. VSS Unity at 7,000 feet, waiting for that telemetry to change. Continuing to try to keep that in shot for you so you can have a rough idea where it is in comparison to White Knight and to the spaceport. Winning, good coverage considering what you have available. I appreciate that. Thanks so much. Uh, Tamir? Tamir? I'm sorry if I say that wrong. I think it's Tamir. Thanks for the coverage. Great work. Really appreciate that super chat. Thank you so much for supporting us. Goes back into bringing you guys the best possible coverage that we can. And it does look like that telemetry of VSS Unity has kind of frozen. Um, so it, it, it is definitely possible that they are basically on the ground at this point point um there is a sometimes a slight delay on the traject telemetry but uh we'll wait for confirmation from virgin galactic should we see that as that has not updated now in a number of minutes uh but there is the spaceport america white knight 2 now forty thousand feet above the spaceport Um, and a, a good shout out 
in the back channels there. Uh, based on its last ping here, it uh, has continued a straight line. It is very likely that this actually looped down to a low altitude, and we have had touchdown. But we will wait for confirmation from Virgin Galactic. The VSS Unity should be on the ground, having completed its third commercial crew mission. Um, based on that, that uh, is just that flight radar continues it out until it has confirmation of loss of signal. Um, but that does signal that it would have glided back. It would not have continued at this altitude for that long. VSS Unity should be back on the ground with astronauts 14, 15, and 16. But we will wait for confirmation from Virgin. As we await that update, if you guys have questions, you can send those in the chat by tagging us at the launch pad. We'll work on answering those live to the best of our ability as we await for that update that VMS Unity, VSS, excuse me, Unity has landed successfully at Spaceport America. You can see there that flight uh, track of its spacecraft as it returned back and that cone that it stays in as it reapproaches from its flight. We are awaiting that update. Dan, thanks for your coverage. Understand you were dealing with limitations. You could not control. Appreciate that. Yeah. Try to do our best. Wanted to make sure we still covered it. Uh, it's important to uh, be able to uh, be able to make sure we cover these flights. These are commercial flights, something that hopefully many of us will be able to do, whether with Virgin Galactic or other uh, space providers in the near future. If you haven't yet, make sure when this stream ends, you head on over. We had an exclusive global first look into space engine systems here in Canada, a new up-and-coming trucking company to space uh, that will also be carrying passengers. Their first test flight with their Hello 1X vehicle will be launching next year with their uh, full-scale vehicles, Hello 1 and Hello 2, hoping to fly by 2025 with the possibility of flying up to 36 passengers at one time and deploying payloads all the way to the moon, mo the moon orbit, moon surface, and possibly even off to Mars. We sat with, down with their president and CTO for an exclusive first look, went into their factory to take a look at their engines, so definitely take some time and check that out. A big thanks to them for supporting us. We have had confirmation from Virgin Galactic. VSS Unity is on the ground. We will pull up the video here as we have had touchdown back at Spaceport America completing its third commercial crew mission. Uh, touchdown was expected uh, about four or five minutes ago completing today's mission, but they are back. Galactic 3 crew with their pilots, crew, spacecraft, and spaceship have landed safely back at Spaceport America in New Mexico after flying three more commercial crew members to the edge of space. White Knight 2 continues to be up at 39,800 feet waiting for clearance. They do have to wait for a while as they have to clear Galac uh, VMS Unity off the runway ahead of being able to actually land White Knight 2. That is going to do it for us though today here at the launch pad. It's our mission to inform and inspire the explorers tomorrow because we believe that space is better together and we're glad to have had you joining us here for the best possible coverage we could do of Galactic 3, Virgin Galactic's third commercial crew. If you haven't yet, take a moment, engage that subscribe button so you never miss another live launch coverage. Space news update, exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview through our two channels, the Launchpad and the Launchpad News, all part of the Launchpad Network. Join us over on our TLP Discord. It's free to join. That's where our community hangs out in between launches. It was a launch day, so use promo code LAUNCHDAY to get 10% off everything over on the shop. And if you're interested in joining the TLP crew as a moderator, journalist, researcher, or possible rocket chaser, head on over to tlpnetwork.com. Click on About. Our applications are open, and maybe you too can help us inform and inspire the explorers of tomorrow, because space is better together. Welcome home to the crew of Galactic 3, but from our TLP Canada studio. My name's Zach, and I'll see you next time, because space is better together. Goodbye.